Bleed, die, and how patriots that go out of their way lead by example, spend a lot of time doing things to ensure Australia and Australians have a future. You seem to be on top of everything and I know how much time it takes up. Lee, uh, Harry speaks so highly of you. Di, um, I know what you're doing and it's really difficult but it's very important work. And Howard, you've been working on campaigns like the other two as well, political campaigns and just doing a lot to fight political Islam. You're all influencers and I talk to a lot of people every day and I know you guys do on Messenger <laughs> so I suppose it's not talking, it's more writing but um, and they tell me that they follow people like yourself they actually never click, never share but they do care one of the reasons they don't click and don't share is because they don't, they're not allowed because their workplace, they've got codes of conduct, etc. Others have told me their friends, family have told them that they don't want to have anything to do with them if they keep banging on about political Islam or politics and etc. etc. But you're, you guys are influencers. in your bubble, those people that are taking notice but they're just not doing anything. So don't think some days that you're a failure because you got two clicks or something like that. It doesn't mean shit. So it's very important being an influencer. I found with um, a majority of patriots are male or female or alpha, alpha male, alpha female, very strong people. What I'm doing here today is to invite the three of you to the Futurist Forum, a forum that's going to tell us what to focus on. The problem has been that there's been too much to focus on and people are just shooting at um, cannons here, there and everywhere but they're not really doing anything, it's not effective. To give you an example with the Futurist Forum, there will only be a few people, there's not going to be many people on it, but they're all important, they've all got great ideas, they're all walk, they all walk the talk, they all uh, get out into the community as well as the social media bubble. An example is Halal. My strategist, um, politicians tell me Halal is here to stay. It's never going to go. The businesses are happy with it, the politicians are happy with it, and naturally the Muslims love it. However, they do tell me that we do have a big chance if we changed our focus to labelling, completely to do with labelling. Any make it illegal to sell halal that's not labelled. And that will be one of the things that we're going to discuss about. One of the other problems is we don't really plan very often, but the big thing with the Futurist Forum is not only selecting those four or five things to focus on, but it will be to develop the plan and have it carried out um, and that's but halal is a good example there COVID-19 vaccine okay I get heaps of people on the Facebook bubble and the Instagram bubble saying they're not getting vaccinated then I get a lot of people in my mail and my messenger and in the street tell me that they can't wait for the vaccine they want to go and see their grandkids 
they want to go back on cruises. Some people go on three cruises a year with their friends and they want to start this up again. Others want to go uh, travel overseas. They've got friends and family overseas and interstate people want to get interstate to their friends and their holiday homes and things like that. The uh, My friends in government tell me in transport that um, it's going to look like if you want to catch a train interstate or a bus you will have to have the vaccination if you want to um, maybe travel regionally by plane they're looking at that you'll probably have to be vaccinated so in a way it is compulsory in a pandemic they can make it compulsory they just give you a jab if you want to accept if not they can't stick it in you but I think they just put you in jail or something like that put you in prison um, Morrison has said he's not going to make it mandatory a university survey I saw said 80% of the people are already ready to put their hand up for the jab now it doesn't seem like that to you and I because we're in this bubble within the multi in, um, in a bubble in the social media. We're actually a bubble in a bubble in a bubble a bubble depending on what bubbles we're in. So it was a bit like in Queensland on social media people were telling me that Pauline was going to win and that but the real people, the hidden people, they voted for Labor. Australia Day, Lee, Harry, Trevor and many are doing so much good for it. We got the shirts, thanks Lee for the idea. Um, and the shirts weren't made to wear necessarily on Australia Day, they were made to remind people that there is Australia Day and it's important to them. Um, I'm lucky here, we've got um, a three concert and all these activities and stalls and that town's put on for Australia Day. Um, I see part of the future is we'll just get stuffed over every day by the government. They'll just make decisions on our behalf whether we like it or not. And the national anthem is a good example of that. Whether you don't mind the changes, but it'd be nice to be asked and um, it's just not the, the Australian way. Okay, Labor. It's our job, our duty to destroy Labor. And we need to look at this as a futurist forum, how we're going to do this. One of the things I've found when I've been out there that no one knows about the Fabian Society, only a few people in our bubble. They don't realise that Labor is going to, um, through small changes, head our society to be a socialist country. Um, Fabian, you need to know a lot about it and we'll need to make sure everyone in our community one of the things we're asking in the Futurist Society is about electric um, support hubs. A lot of the people haven't really been going out and doing this in the real world. Some have. But um, we're going to ask each Futurist to have their own local um, Facebook page and Instagram that tells people what's really happening with their political party in the area, how, how they're screwing them over. Um, the Communist Party, the Communist Party, well Lee's doing a lot there, but we've got to still remember that it's not the, co not the Chinese people. The biggest thing we can do with the Communist Party and the, have an effect on it is not to purchase any food that comes from from China. I get my honey next door, I don't get it through New Zealand that's China, made um, honey from China. 
um, your Mars bars and that china. Easy, make your own, cheaper anyway. Any food you should get from farmer's market or out of your own garden and other food from your local markets where possible, but no Chinese food. That's it. We ban it. We don't do anything with it. But you can't do anything about other things like medication. Over 80% of medication in the United States comes from China. China owns a lot of patents on medicine. Some comes from Brazil and the rest comes from India. Now that the medicine that comes from India, 95% of the ingredients come from China. So you've got to continue. I'm a diabetic, I've got to continue with my diabetic tablets. Um, health is very important and most of the people that I know have some health problem. The other thing is we ride motorcycles, some of us drive cars, have lawn mowers and none of us um, the majority of the parts come from China, so you have no choice in those things. Have a look if you can get it from somewhere else, but mostly, even if you go and get it from somewhere else, it's come from China. So food, nothing from China. We don't eat nothing from China. We don't buy any food from China. Child abuse, these are my notes, it's not that fixed. I'm, I'm hoping I'm not boring you too much, but child abuse, female genital mutilation, zero tolerance, international zero tolerance is on the 6th of February. Um, we have done a few things in the past, but female genital mutilation, Jen and I have a shirt we've taken turns wearing, and I was in Bunnings one day, and I only, like, I've only put this shirt on for the video, I just got out of the shower, so my hair's strange, but just got out of the shower, um, put the shirt on, and I do the same when I go to town, I put or out somewhere, I put on one of our shirts to get a message across anyway, and then come home, take it straight off, put another shirt on, but go to Bunnings, and um, the next day I go back, and this young girl comes up to me, that works there, and she says, what's female genital mutilation, is that piercing and I said no and I t explained to her what it was and she was telling me that at the ta at the lunch table not one person knew what it was and that's why they decided to ask me and she was surprised not that it happens but that um, girls in Australia were being sent back over through seas and girl it was happening to girls in Australia horrified and we talk about um, child brides and she said, oh, that doesn't happen in Australia. And when I explained and I explained to her that she should be investigating these things, not taking my word for it. Um, but she was surprised to hear that um, child brides, she had heard that there's trafficking of girls into prostitution and things like that. So what we need to do and we won't be doing anything probably this year, but at the folk at the Futures Forum, we should bring it up as a child abuse thing. So that, um, and celebrate that day as um, zero child abuse. And we'll create a plan for that. Uh, the social media bubble, we live in such a social media bubble. Don't allow it to um, form your ideas. Make sure you go out, talk to people and see what's happening out there. I know Happy Harry, he talks to everyone and that's the only way to find out really what's happening in the world. The social media bubble, a lot of it's an act. I've had people who said they're not getting vaccinated. Uh, their friends said everyone they know are not getting vaccinated and then people I'm talking to on Facebook they ask me a question I always ask about if they're getting vaccinated and virtually everyone is not getting is getting vaccinated yet on Facebook and Instagram it doesn't seem that way we really need to take it to the street
Facebook, Instagram versus the others. A while ago, one of the big uh, political Islam groups, 36,000, um, got knocked over because of hate crimes and they asked me if I would go <coughs> to an alternative Facebook to Facebook, a social media site. I investigated the site and it was owned by Russia and Russia had got gets all the information. Then I was asked uh, to look at it, go to another site by someone and it was owned by China. And then another one is a marketing company owns it and they take everything off you and sell it to marketing companies. Now, one of the two big things that's going to hurt the Patriot Movement in Australia, and that is defamation and hate, preaching hate. Sorry about this, I've got a bit of a not running out. It's a beautiful morning here in Juro. It's going to be very hot, 30 degrees again today. And um, with Facebook, I've been told by my people that, and Instagram, at least we're protected in some ways. If we put, we get shit, so we put something that is a hate, could incite hate, we may not think it will, but it could, and we could be locked up for it. Um, Facebook generally captures it and takes it off. It's the same with um, defamation very scary thing they've already going after patriots in Australia and um, it does the same however if you're on one of these other ones then what's going to happen is someone gets you going and you say something you can lose your house and your car and everything else your life can become more of a misery than the politicians are making it so be careful in what we say. Also, I noticed um, the governments are putting pressure on on Facebook, uh, not Facebook, on Google and all these other apps that supply the apps and the service providers to, on these sites that are allowing people to put porn, do whatever they want, say whatever they want, that's not true, etc. There. So there's going to be a big change in that area. We need our people in Parliament. Ellie and um, Elizabeth Power, they were um, on Pauline's team years ago. We have a need to highlight policy deficiencies, especially of the Labor Party. Um, party deficiencies need to be highlighted. We need ministers' deficiencies to electorates. We, we've got to really highlight those things. We've got to ver go in very heavy with when they're not doing what we want. Um, we've got to encourage self-reliance and self-sufficiency. We've created that people under the cross preppers. That's not a crazy prepper side. <laughs> And prepper sites aren't crazy anyway, you learn a lot from it. I meant fanatical prepper site. It's about, you know, growing your own veggies, which is hard for some people when they haven't got time. But it's about alternatives, encouraging people to just look at the alternatives, think, get excited about how they can become a little bit more self-reliant. For example, when I was working, I'm retired now, and they, we were watching a video one night on YouTube and it was about um, self-sufficiency prepping and that. And it said, you should always have $600 cash on you in your safe at home so that if the electricity goes down or, or the banks get a bug, they've got to shut their systems down you'll be able to survive for the week or the two weeks that uh, they're down. Also, it says, said you have lawnmower petrol at home, or you should have a drum or two drums, not near your house, of um, 
petrol for your car so that you can go anywhere because the pumps don't pump these days you can't crank them so things like that little things Jennifer and I when we're 15 kilometers from town so when we do go into town which is real often we go might go to a Chinese restaurant or more likely an Indian restaurant or Thai but um, we'll have meat there but here we just have eggplant and tomatoes and squash whatever's growing and it tastes so much better I'll tell you that now the great reset you sh should take the opportunity to read the book you can get it on Amazon to do on your tablet um, the electronic version for less than seven dollars Elena Miss Uppercase you always know when it's in Elena's post it's in uppercase yet when she writes the story to me on messenger it's in proper case <laughs> very effective that's kind of branding um, she put something up called the global non-compliance and I was I've read it a number of times, it's just, I've put it on the prepper page, but I've put it up a couple of times and I'll probably put it up again today, and it's called Global Non-Compliance, and that's what we need to be, Global Non-Compliant, buy everything local, grow our own food, don't um, use credit cards as little as possible, try to use cash the majority of the time, use um, barter the goods, here we just give food to each other, the neighbours and that. Um, we've got chooks up, the, not ours, chooks behind us that um, the neighbour has. We always buy three dozen of him, as I said, with the honey. Uh, three dozen for ten dollars and um, they're amazing. The chooks love it there. We can see what they're doing and uh, the eggs are just so different to the ones in the store. I don't know. We used to go to a club in Wollongong and tomatoes there. And I don't know what they do to take the taste out of the tomatoes. <laughs> and here the tomatoes that were growing, uh, they just taste like when I was a kid. They just taste wonderful. So, and it's possible to grow in containers. So if you rent, um, just put a plastic down on concrete and put it pots on growing pots. We do grow here in containers as well as in um, the ground. I'm hoping that you'll become a futurist which to decide what we'll focus on. There won't be many of us and um, but you're three that I I always look at what you've got to say. I hear where you're going to. We never always agree with each other and that's been a good thing. And that's been another thing I haven't been happy with. I remember when I started um, 19CC in 2013 and people, when we got on the internet and that, Patriots were respectful to each other. Now they just want to have their say and they refuse to listen. I've got some fantastic ideas from listening to people that I didn't 100% agree with. Sometimes only 10% agree but got some great ideas. It's about respect and loyalty and respect to the three of you and I'm hoping that you will um, come on board to help us decide what to focus on. I'm would hope that there'd be no more than five things to focus on. So, hopefully talk to you on Facebook soon. Thanks again.